Good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be back in India, especially during Holi, and it's a welcome break from the cold weather in the U.S. So last year I was in India and I gave a talk where I spoke about how the world and India were just entering the digital era. It's an era where computers, the internet, social media, big data, smartphones, were not only changing the way we work, but also the way we interact as a society. And one of the primary points of my talk was how in the digital era, everything is fast. Everything is frenetic. It's no longer about collaboration, it's hyper-collaboration. We no longer adopt things, we hyper-adopt. We no longer innovate, it's all about hyper-innovation. These hyper-characteristics are present in industries all around us, biotech, energy, telecom, and certainly in mobile consumer electronics. So what I'd like to do now is drill down deeper into mobile consumer electronics into the device that we all know and love, our favorite device, the smartphone, to discuss how it pertains to India in the digital era. Now, the smartphone didn't just appear overnight. It took 24 years to come to fruition. The early days of the smartphone were spent searching for that perfect combination of use case and form factor. It started with the Newton, which had some basic note-taking capability and calendar functionality. And then multiple uh, mobile devices went through multiple iterations. We went through flip phones and Palm Pilots and Blackberries searching for that perfect marriage of use case and form factor. And that marriage manifested itself in the first iPhone, which is a wonderful combination of operating system and user interface and form factor and compelling use cases. Now, once the product baseline was set, the mobile phone ecosystem exploded over the next 12 years. Networks are advancing from 3G to 5G. Global network traffic is going from 2,000 gigabits per second to 100,000 gigabits per second. Mobile ad spending went from obviously zero to $184 billion, and the same thing with apps. We went from no apps to now there's seven million apps available worldwide. And what started with Apple grew to a handful of innovative handset makers, which has given way to a whole host of outstanding global brands. This year, nearly five billion smartphones will be in use throughout the world. And as I've said in the past, I define you, to defy you, anyone, to think of a device or any object that more people in the course of human history have carried on their person at the same time. The smartphone is a perfect exa example of how hyper-innovation and hyper-adoption have come together to enable hyper-collaboration. Smartphones are at the heart of the digital era both for content creation, think tweets and emails and texts and photos and videos, but more importantly, for content consumption. They're an integral part of our lives. Interacting with our devices is constant wherever and wherever we are in the world. Would you believe that on average people touch their phones 2,000 times a day? Seems like an awfully large number, but the average tweet now is 240 characters, so five tweets and you're halfway there. If you're like me, you have to type every text two or three times, so it's a believable number. And between creating, consuming, and sharing content, people are spending over two hours a day on their devices. In fact, in this room alone, I'm sure people are well past two hours today. The desire and the need to connect is all-consuming, and I can't think of anything else that occupies our time so consistently and continuously. So the key question is, what does this all mean for India? Well, let me tell you what I think it means. Usually at the onset of an era, or a technology, a technology change, it's the most developed, the richest countries that adopt the change first. But incredibly enough, in mobile consumer electronics, it's the emerging markets that are actually using more advanced features. Look at some of these statistics. Mobile payments, a factor of three to one, advantage emerging markets. Look at streaming content, a factor of 2.5 to one, advantage emerging markets. And this pattern is playing out across many metrics. The Indian consumer is adopting tech faster than many developed countries. India is also doing a fantastic job contributing to the digital era with infrastructure, apps, and networks. Setting the stage for incredible opportunities with one of the world's largest populations ready to embrace the digital era and all of its capabilities. Today in India, there are 326 smartphone users. At the other end of the spectrum are 476 million people who don't even have a phone yet. And in the middle are 540 million 
people who are using future phones, which are very important devices. They're people's first entry into a connected world and some of the basic capabilities of a smartphone. But for people to realize their full potential, they clearly need a smartphone. They need the larger screen, the full touch functionality, they need the processing power, the camera, the video, and they want access to those millions of apps. Now, the social and economic benefits of increasing smartphone penetration can be profound. I know we've already talked about this this morning. But as you can see on this graph, there's clear correlation between smartphone penetration and, and GDP. This shows the chart on a global basis. Now, arguing what's cause and what's effect, that's probably better for a statistician or an economist, but the correlation is clear. And the same thing is playing out in India. You can see the same correlation between GDP growth and smartphone penetration. Now, globally, 35% of the world's population have smartphones today. In India, that number is 25%. So clearly, room for growth. There's an incredible opportunity to increase smartphone penetration in India and impact economic growth. And as I said earlier, future phones represent the first opportunity for people to get digitally connected, even if it's limited. Nonetheless, people are drawn to the benefits of connectivity. Corning did some primary research on feature phone users, and based on this research, you can extrapolate that of the 544 million feature phone users, 40%, or roughly 220 million, feature phone users indicated they wanted to transition to a smartphone within two years. The same segment of feature phone users are already taking advantage of basic digital life capabilities watching video, connecting on social media, accessing the internet. Clearly, they're primed to adopt and enjoy the full smartphone experience. So here's the key question. If the benefits of a smartphone are so compelling and feature phone users want to make the transition, what's holding them back? Three things. Number one, cost. We need to lower cost as, an, as the architects of the ecosystem. These consumers can't afford 6,000 rupees for an entry-level smartphone. Number two, we need to expend battery, extend battery life. Oftentimes, these people don't have access to charge their phone every eight hours. And number three, we need to improve durability. These people can't have their phone drop and be damaged when the cost of replacing a screen or buying a new phone is prohibitive. But the one thing we can't do as an ecosystem is optimize on one dimension. Racing to the bottom by packing a handset with the cheapest materials possible is not the best option. The resulting phone may have a list price of 3,500 rupees, but a six-hour battery life in a phone that breaks the first time you drop it is not the answer for the Indian consumer. But there are ways to optimize the Indian consumer. We just need to be thoughtful about our solutions. Let me look at glass as an example. If you wanted the cheapest glass possible, all you have to do is use window glass, which is soda lime glass. Not good for scratch, not good for drop, but it would certainly give you the cheapest material possible. But for an incremental 10 to 15 cents, which is 7 to 10 rupees, you can get Gorilla Glass on your device, which does protect against drop. Add another, say, 20 or 30 cents, and you can get one of our flagship glasses. So in the range of 35 to 40 rupees, you can get best-in-class drop performance and keep an eye on economics. We're also working on composite materials that will improve the scratch performance of the device and also lower the reflection. So now you can also get a better viewing experience. So you could use this to have a brighter display or you could turn the power down to get the same display image you had before and extend battery life. So in this one example with glass, we've been able to improve durability, extend battery life, improve the display performance, all while paying attention to the economics focus for the Indian consumer. We need to be doing this across all the components in the smartphone and across the broader ecosystem, tailoring our solutions for the Indian consumer. So what would I like you to take away today from my talk? Number, number one, the world is at the start of the digital era, and India is not only participating in the digital era, in several cases, it's leading the digital era. Number two, clear potential for even higher smartphone penetration, which will lead to economic growth to be had and a tremendous opportunity for more people to be fully participating in the digital era. And finally, most importantly, it's our mandate as architects of the mobile consumer electronics ecosystem to tailor our solution for the Indian consumer and the Indian market 
to enable this transformation into the digital era. The sky's the limit for what India can achieve. Thank you.